What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course, this is TWA Motorsports, and today we are back on the gray truck. So in the last video, uh, you guys saw me get the backup camera installed, we got the carpet, you know, kind of laid in here. It's not where, where it, you know, where it needs to be. Uh, we got all the kill mat on the roof, the um, down below. We ran all the speaker wires. We ran the power wires. So today, what I want to do is I want to start trimming that carpet to get it setting in there the way I want it to set. So um, this is going to be a process, guys. Uh, when I originally bought this, I thought, man, this won't be that big a deal. You know, we'll just lay the carpet in, trim the edges, and we'll be good. Well, it's a little more in depth than that. Um, I did in the last video find, you know, a, at least the bolt holes for the seat, but we still, as you can see, we have a ton of trimming to do. Now, while it does look way better, uh, way nicer, um, we we still need we got work to do. So what I'm going to do is I think I will try to maybe set my tripod somewhere in here we'll get a light and we're going to start probably trimming from the front that way we can get it up under the dash where i want it to be and then we'll just kind of work our way towards the back at least that's the plan i don't like i've never done this before guys so we are learning you are learning with me so either way let's uh, get it set up and see if we can trim some carpet so what i'm using here is i've got some there's actually 10 snips but they do a great job at cutting uh, I've got a box knife and then I've got a kind of a marker so we can kind of mark some areas. So what I'll probably do guys is I'll time lapse the majority of this um, and maybe cut in randomly and talk about, you know, kind of how it's going. But I think I'm going to start in this area right here, uh, start trimming. I'm going to kind of fold it up in here, press it down, you know, fold it up and kind of mark where I think I need to cut. And so we'll start there and we'll take some, just some small pieces out at a time. And I think honestly, that's the best way to start this. So we're gonna start there and we'll just kind of see what happens. I think I've got it trimmed the way I like it, you know, up under the firewall and whatnot. I went ahead and put my bolt in for the dash brace. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, look guys, it just takes some time. I didn't use the markers much. I just kind of pulled it back, trimmed it, pushed it back in, pulled it back, trimmed it, as you can see. But um, nah, not quite as bad as I thought. to trim too too close right to the edge I've obviously trimmed the side but here's what I think is gonna happen uh, when we put the weight of the seat on here it's gonna 
either push this out or it's gonna short it. And so what I think I need to do is we need to move over to the seats at this point and get them all cleaned up. And then once we get them cleaned up, um, then we can you know, set that in here, get some weight on it. And then we'll kind of know a little bit more about what it's gonna do. I think I have a good idea. And that's why I quit cutting over here. But man, I sure hate to short that if, um, you know, when I put weight on it, it shrinks it up from the edges. So let's move over to the seats and uh, start cleaning on them. I actually got to thinking that I probably better go ahead and finish cleaning my console, getting it back together, because I have to have that in place before the seats can go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna set up. I know we've had a lot of time lapses in this, guys, but I wanna show you how long this stuff takes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start cleaning on this stuff, kind of show you guys some time lapse of me cleaning and the reassembly process. controls for the radio we're not going to be using that there's a guy on ebay and i'll list this down in the description below that makes a 3d printed pocket so you don't have to have that ugly um, piece of uh, stereo wiring that doesn't fit and look at that that's pretty cool that like that just 3d printed fits nice stays in there I was kind of worried because it didn't have clips on the side, but the way it's made, that's pretty nice. I dig that. All right, we're going to keep going. I've got some more panels to clean, obviously, but it's looking better.
at this point after scrubbing what seems like forever. Uh, this thing looks incredible, guys. Look how much better it looks. Now, I've still gotta do like the top pad. You can see those over there in the cup insert. Uh, but we've got what we need to put in the truck finished. Uh, these are just extra parts. I still have to clean the insert piece up right there that needs to go in there. But here's what I've done. I went ahead and cut the little studs through. You can see here in the back, that's where we line up that console. So it sets on the front stud, sets on the back stud. And I just wanna kind of set it in here and kind of look at what we've got. This carpet's still bunched up. It hasn't been real warm. Well, I say it hasn't been real warm. Um, but I, I think that the seat needs to set down here, get some weight on it. And so that's our next step after we kind of negotiate where we want the console to be. So I'm going to grab the console. We're going to attempt to put it in, see if it lines up and um, then kind of go from there. It actually looks really good in here. So um, kind of impressed that it looks so nice. I'm still got a couple spots that need to work out in the carpet, but I don't know about this spot back here, guys, like I had told you about trying to make a connection between those two. I still might figure something out. I'm not gonna concern myself with that right now. Um, that can be done, you know, later, but yeah. That's going to be tough. I may have to like have the side of the console off while I do it. So I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. I'm going to go grab my steam cleaner. We're going to start cleaning on the seat. I may try to get my light hung here. I may try to go ahead and cut um, out from around these studs because we know that that's, you know, obviously where it's going to be. I don't think we're going to have any issues there. So, I may go ahead and do that. In fact, I know I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to move the console back out of the way. I'm going to cut a spot um, so we have a good access to the bolts. And uh, I really kind of want to just go real close to them. You know, not leaving anything more than what we need. Um, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's what we want to do. So, I want to show you guys. I actually, before I wanted to work on the seat, I tried to mess with this to make it where it would blow out. Now it's not the prettiest thing. It's just duct tape. And uh, so what I did was I cut this original piece that it hooked on here and went over to split off. I taped that up. And um, once I did that, I just cut down the middle, pulled this up and then cut a couple pieces to go on the side. Like I said, it's not gonna be perfect, but um, it should do pretty well, you know, and I'd rather have that than nothing. I mean, look, the vents aren't, it's not a super great hookup right here anyway. And so uh, this sets, you know, nice and even, even up against the plate that's on the front of the console. If you buy a console that doesn't have these, then please, you know, reuse the ones that came with the truck, the ones that come out under the seat. But uh, this is going to work for me. Like I said, it's not the prettiest. I didn't show you guys that because it was literally just cutting pieces of cardboard and then I used hard plastic, but we're going to slide that in there. You'll never even see it. That's why the side of the console is off. It's because I wanted to see a little, uh, have a little more room to look and see what was going on. But now we're going to go ahead, put the console back together, slide it back up here, and uh, then we'll worry about getting the seats in place. Now, I told you guys I was going to be working on the seats next, but here's what happened. Um, I decided since I got the headliner recovered and I've got it setting over there, I'll go look, show you here in a second. But 
I had two chips in my glass, okay? And then when you go into the sun, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but an older piece of glass will have those pits in it where the sun, it's just almost overwhelming. So I decided to make my life easier um, instead of having my upholstery guy come out and help me put this thing back in without screwing it up and it needed glass anyway, I had my glass guy come out here and yank the glass out. So you could see we have no windshield here at all. And uh, so that makes life really, really easy on us putting the headliner back in. As a matter of fact, if you look at the GM manual and look at the removal of this here, it's going to say the very first step is to pull the glass out. So how crazy is that? Now it can come out and my upholstery guy does it all the time and um, never has any issues. But this was, it needed a glass anyway. And I have a local glass guy that just came, popped it out. He's gonna come back and put a new glass in it once we get the headliner in place. But really guys, all we need to do is flip this thing over. We need to make sure that all our wiring stays in the same place. I'm gonna have my son or wife, probably my son come out and help us thread it through. Uh, we'll just kind of walk it through the front, get it up in place. A couple things you wanna need, or you're gonna need to have ready are the two longer clips. You see those right there. Those are gonna go in the back. And then the two shorter ones are gonna go kind of right here in the middle. And then I got the light. I really don't think I'm gonna put it in right now because the just those four things should hold it up and it should be fine. Uh, but the only other thing is there are a couple pieces of Velcro. You see the Velcro there. There is a piece of Velcro here. Make sure that those line up with the sides right here. Can you guys see the Velcro here? Uh, but other than that, it seems pretty self-explanatory. We're just gonna try it and uh, kind of see what happens here. This is way easier. All right, go ahead and come in. And if you can hold it right there, that'd be great. While I get some, you got it? This side, push it back this way. Got two more to put in here. You're towards you, I think. I can't tell. Let it down just stay. Oh, I see it now.
Okay, there's that one. Look at it. Okay, that'll work. Once we got all that, uh, we got those two pins in back, you can really let it fall uh, the front. We need to go ahead and put um, our center console in. And then I did go ahead and put this on. I didn't show you guys that and I should have. This guy right here, it just uses two clips to hold it, but then there's two clips on the back. So you, sl you put this over the top of this clip and then slide it over. So you can see this is how that goes together. This stays in place and then once we push those clips in, we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start grabbing some stuff and putting it back in place. The only other thing, make sure your wiring went into your um, third brake light because that is the wiring for the third brake light. Make sure it's there. Um, the clip in the back was actually broken off that goes into the third brake light and my upholstery guy said, look, those break all the time. Don't even worry about putting it back on. Uh, so I didn't. Uh, other than that, guys, we just need to basically put stuff back in place. Uh, finding those holes, as you can see, was kind of a pain, uh, but you can see up in the opening, same way in the back, you can pull it down far enough to see the opening, push it through, and then kind of get it into place. But um, let's keep going here. At this point, we're ready to move on to the steam cleaning. Now, I've got my VX5000 steam cleaner. Uh, guys, I don't even know if they make this thing anymore, but it's absolutely amazing. These seats are not that bad. The main things that I want to, you know, do or see these little stains here on the side. I'm sure you, the camera picks that up. It'll take that stuff out without completely soaking the seat. Now, I am gonna spray in that gray bottle some um, super clean on here. I've just got it diluted down somewhat. But before I do that, this thing takes quite a while. Um, it's actually cooled off quite a bit here. Uh, I'm gonna take a brush and we're gonna clean out the rails here under the seat. Then we'll move it forward, do the same thing in the back. Um, I've got my vacuum hooked up over there as well. So we're just gonna go over it real quick with that while the steam cleaner heats up. And then we'll kind of, you know, mist it down with some stuff. I might use my drill brush, but for the most part, the steam will do most of the hard work. So we won't have to do too much. Like I said, these seats are not that bad. The back ones are worse, uh, but the front ones for, um, they seem to be in good shape. So I think I'll, I'll probably time-lapse the majority of this. That steam cleaner, um, I don't know how much you'll be able to see. I think you'll be able to see some of these spots go away, but I'll just try to move you around as I go. So that one's finished and uh, could I do a little better with my extractor yeah I probably could the problem is that with the extractor and using those on seats is man it soaks things you know that soaks the foam down and uh, to be honest with you it just takes forever to dry out so I like my steam cleaner because it takes you know those those stains that we saw on the side they're completely gone now um, it doesn't get you know deep in stains like there's one behind the seat belt that I could probably get I don't know if you can see it's a little darker there and I don't know that may just be rubbing on that over the years but you know this the extractor might get more of that out 
the problem is guys i don't want to wait um for a week for these things to completely dry out so uh the other thing i was thinking is here i am doing this saying i'm going to put the seats in but i can't put the seats in until i put the trim in so i am going to have to go back and trim especially along like the the pillar there i'm gonna have to put that pillar piece in um before the piece goes in on the bottom so i'm gonna have to put that because you can't put it in after the seats in so um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and steam clean these i won't show you guys the whole process because literally it's going to be just a duplicate of what i just did uh so the next thing you guys are going to see is i think we'll hop back in the truck see if we can maybe trim down some of the places like where the pillars go and some of the interior plastics and maybe we'll start cleaning some of them so since <clears throat> I'm gonna have to get the seat in, but I've gotta get this panel in first. I'm gonna start trimming, and I'm just gonna push this around, and we're gonna start trimming a little bit at a time. I'm gonna try to go, you know, trim a little bit, and we'll test fit some panels, trim a little bit more. And I, the, the one thing I will tell you guys, I went down to my upholstery shop um, that did my headliner, and when I was talking to him, he ordered some of this exact same carpet. He's getting ready to do a truck just like this. Um, he doesn't order it with the mass backing. So this black kind of tarry stuff or thicker backing. And so because he does it, man, it lays down so much smoother. Uh, now it does come supposedly conform to the floor, but for the most part, it doesn't conform that great to the floor. And so with no mass backing, I, if I had it to do over, I might order it without the mass backing and then do two layers of the um, kill mat on the bottom side, I think. But either way, we're committed now. I'm not sending this back, but I'm just gonna trim a little bit. We may go grab some plastic, test fit it and so on and um, just keep going until we get where we need to be. So what we're doing here is we're you know, grabbing this and test fitting it. We're still quite a ways off here. We've got quite a bit to trim, um, but that's, that's really the only way you can get it right, guys. You just kind of grab this piece. I need to clean it so I'm not putting dirt on here, but got a little ways to go. Trim, test fit, trim, test fit, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm just gonna keep doing it. You know, we've got a lot of margin for error is how thick this is. We don't have a ton of error that we can get down here though. So uh, you can get real crazy shorten it here, but you don't wanna short it up where this panel gets thin, which is, you know, right there. But we'll keep trimming. We'll keep checking back in and uh, see what we, what we think we can get here. Vacuum this area here after I trimmed it. I've got this trim where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy in. Should just clip. And that's a good fit. That fits nice. Now I can't do this one until I get this pillar piece in. So I'm gonna go grab it and kind of test fit it, trim a little bit clean it up and then we'll try it. So I've got it trimmed back a little further. We're gonna see if we can get this guy into place. I think we can. Maybe, there we go. And it's gonna take some conforming over the, it's gonna take some heat. But once we get that one in place, we can go ahead and try to snap that front one in. Let's try to get this one in now. Like I said, it's gonna be a tight fit for a while. It's gonna take some time and heat to get it where it needs to be. wanting to go on there. I don't know why right here it's causing us a problem. It doesn't want to hook here. Oh, I know why. There we go. That K 
kick panel wasn't far enough up. All right, we're in. That looks pretty good, guys. I'm not gonna lie. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. I've got this seat clean. Why don't we put it in? I'm gonna vacuum this off real quick, and then maybe we'll set this seat in. Well, seems like we're lined up. Let's try to put some bolts in. So we got the seat in and, um, oh man, what a difference. Man, you need a light. You need a light up here so you guys can see. Look at the difference. So much nicer, fits decent. Um, did we have to do a lot of trimming? Absolutely. Do we still have a lot? Absolutely. But I'm, I'm good with those results. That carpet looks nice. So the downside back here is we have to trim a couple spots. Obviously we got to trim around the doors and around the trim, but we got to trim that back wall. Cause I don't think I'm going to be able to, it's a little too long to just tuck it in there and everything be fine. So, um, it's just going to take some doing guys. I, I'm going to go back and forth. I'll probably, um, at this point not show you any more of the trimming because literally I'm just trimming one section pushing it down checking it pushing it down checking it and uh, we'll just come back and show you kind of the progress as I go maybe when I get some more trimmed up or some more paneling in I'll show you guys what's going on Let's take a look at where we've gotten to now. We got um, all this rear trim for the most part put in. I put this panel in, you guys saw me do that. Then the bottom one, obviously we put the top one in first, but uh, then my battery ran out when I was installing that carpet. You can really see the difference in the color of carpet between what I got and what is back there. Now, if a guy wanted to, he could order another piece and do that as well, but you're never gonna see that to be quite honest with you. But I did go ahead and poke the holes through for the seats. I haven't steam cleaned them yet. Um, everything is coming together really nice. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, we still got quite a bit to do though. Um, oh, it, it's just wearing me out. I've been out here cleaning between cleaning parts. I cleaned both sides of each one of these panels, um, steam cleaning the seats and um, cutting the carpet, trimming the carpet and whatnot. But I think we're gonna be finished for today. It still has some wrinkles that you can see down there. Why I wanted to put the seats in, look at the, there's no wrinkles up front here. So it's laying down really nice and that's the way it's gonna be once we get some weight on this and uh, it goes through a couple heat cycles outside. It's gonna look really, really nice. But like I said, I also would probably not buy the one with the um, original backer. Now the this backer like this, like I said earlier, while that is the factory style, uh, man, it would make life so much easier just to put two layers of that kill mat in there and then just lay that carpet without. But either way, guys, like I said, I think we are finished for this video. Um, in the next video on this thing, we are going to have hopefully the windshield back in it. We are going to completely finish up the inside of it, um, including, you can see I have a sub box sitting right there. So we are going to be putting some subwoofers in it. I know I told you, uh, you know, I may or may not do that, but I am going to be doing that. So you will just have to tune in next time to see exactly what subs we are gonna be using what amplifier, um, and more of this thing getting complete. Like I said in the next video, we are going to completely knock out uh, the rest of this, get it back together, and then on to the lowering, hopefully. So anyway, guys, if you are enjoying this, please like always go down there and smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, guys, you gotta go down there and hit the subscribe button. Of course, while you're down there, ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video, and stay tuned to see what we work on next.